Coach Norville spoke quite a bit about special teams, and obviously you guys want to get more out of that and the disappointment of it. I asked him, how do you go about doing that with practice? Is it switching people out? Is it uh, just emphasizing things differently or more so? Just kind of want to have your thoughts on special teams. I mean, big picture, um, it's not – we for the investment and the time that is put into it, we haven't reaped the rewards and the results uh, from from all of the investment. But, um, you know, there it, that's a, a super broad question, right? So um, – in some cases, I think it's personnel. You know, we got to look at some different different op options and, and uh, uh, give some guys some different opportunities. And in other cases, it's it's execution. Um, some of it's uh, coaching. Some of it's playing. I mean, it's, there's a there's a lot that's leading us not into to being what we expect to be. Um, but it's it's something that we're committed to doing, and we will get it right. Ira, right side. Um, Ryan, obviously, it's a huge moment for him to come through. Um, could you just talk about him and what he's like and how the, you guys have been confident in him even though he hasn't made every kick and, and how big that moment could be for him? Yeah, you know, Ryan in, in a, in a five-game span has kind of uh, ran the whole roller coaster of, of emotions, um, highs and lows. You know, he uh, – um, the one thing I do like, you know, one of the things I really like about him is his just his demeanor on the sideline. Um, it doesn't he doesn't seem phased. Uh, I think he knew the whole you know the whole time leading into that that last drive that that was going to be how it went down. He and I kept taking a peek over at him. I wasn't going to go over and really bother him. Uh, and he seemed in the moment. He seemed calm. He seemed collected. Um, we were obviously all aware they had a timeout. Um, he was probably going to get iced. No issues. You know, he was smiling during the timeout. Um, so, so I, I really like his demeanor, his approach, his mindset, and uh, the fact that every time he has had a little bit of a setback, he's come back and and answered the bell. Um, you know, he did it after the uh, the miss at the end of the game against Notre Dame. Came back and hit the the 53 yard field goal against Jacksonville State. Missed an extra point. You know, earlier in the season, came back, made a made a field goal. You know, just things that that have happened throughout the the course of the year. He's always found a way to respond, and and uh, I appreciate that about him. Corey, when you're looking at kickoff returners, how do you judge or gauge who's good at it in a practice where they're not getting hit? That's a great question. Um, you know, really, it's it's you take you're taking everything into account, and uh, in, when you're trying to make those evaluations. Uh, especially with the offensive players, you know, it's not just what they've done and what it looks like um, when they have the ball in their hand from a special team standpoint, but what does it look like when they have it from an offensive perspective? And uh, you know, the uh, there's a lot of guys that have some explosive ability that we have on the offensive side, and that was one of the reasons why Pokey was in there uh, from a punt return perspective. Um, you know, part of having a successful punt return is being able to make the first guy miss. And, um, you know, that's one thing that he shows offensively is that when he catches the ball in those uh, in the screen game or those quick throws, that he can make somebody miss and get vertical. Um, so you're not always just gauging it off of, of what the, the return actually looks like, but you're using all the information that you can gather from what it looks like when they have their ball in their hands and, and how effective they can be. Kind of following up on that, uh, Ja'Kai Douglas, I think it was Ja'Kai's last kickoff return. It didn't look like he, he sprints out. Is that by design? Do you need him to kind of have a little bit more hurry up on that? <laughs> yeah, no, sir, it was, that part was not by design. I think, I think you know, the tricky thing uh, on that last one was, um, and, uh, you know, hit the thought going into the, to the play was, if the ball's in the end zone, keep it in the end zone. Let's take the ball to 25. He caught the ball about a half a yard deep in the end zone. And I think there was part of him that wasn't sure exactly where he was. Um, and that, that, that was the hesitation. You know, what, was he a little bit out of the end zone? Because obviously he doesn't want to make a, a critical mistake in that situation. So, um, you know, I, I think that was what caused the hesitation. Moving forward, the best, the best thing to do is just fair catch it, and either way you're good. Um, but I, I think that was what the hesitation was. That was not, that was not a design, and it wasn't something that, that uh, he tried to do or we tried to do. Keeping with the uh, kickoff returns, it, it, is the philosophy always going to be we're going to, unless it's deep in the end zone, we're always going to run it out? Or you guys, because you had pretty rough field position a lot of times on kick returns, is there anything like, look, if it's in the five, we're struggling, we're just going to take a, take, put a knee down, get the ball at the 25? Or what's the philosophy there? Yeah, so that, I mean, that's, a, that's a great question. So um, 
from a from a big picture philosophy standpoint, like just a, a program philosophy, we want to create um, game changing opportunities within the King game. I mean that that's why we spend the time and the focus that we do. Obviously, that hasn't always translated, and, and we're certainly aware of that. Um, but it's it's there's twofold to that, right? There's the mindset and the approach of building the program the way you want to build it, and part of that is is not conceding and saying, hey, listen, we're right now we're just not really good at this right now, so we're just going to fair catch them all. Um, and then there's the flip side of that is of being foolish from a coaching standpoint, right? We don't want to put our guys in, in bad situations and certainly be backed up. So you're, you're trying to build it, but the only way you can build it is if you give yourself a chance. It's kind of like the punt block thing, right? Punt pressure is, is important to us. Um, but unfortunately, we've had two penalties on, on pump blocks. Does that mean we're never going to block a punt again? I hope that's not what it, what it means, but it means we got to just get better at what we're doing. Um, so the same goes true, the same mindset on the kickoff return. We, we don't want to go into any game conceding that we're just not going to return the ball this week. Um, but we got to make good choices, and we got to improve in terms of everything we're doing there. You know, one of the things, and, and I know um, s stats can always be skewed and twisted and turned in every, every way, that, especially if you're trying to make them in your favor. But on the returns that we've brought out this year, I think we're averaging the 23-yard line as a start point. Obviously, if we stay in the end zone and start at the 25, two-yard difference is a two-yard difference. The ones that stand out are the ones that get hit inside the 20, and that obviously has happened. But um, I don't think we're, we're anywhere near the point where we just want to concede that, hey, we're just going to take it to the 25 and keep moving every time. Uh, because then you're not building anything within your program the way it needs to be built. And uh, you know, I would say that would be probably true on offense and defense. You don't want to do anything foolish, but you also you want to keep building and improving and growing. And Because and, uh, there will be a point in time that that, that unit is a weapon for us. Uh, everything in Coach Norvell's history, everything in my history speaks to the idea that that will end up turning for us at some point. As far as the return guys themselves, um, I think some of the guys you, you maybe started the year expecting to be main contributors haven't been always been available. So you've tried different guys. Um, how important would it be to have? Do you need to have just like one or two main guys, or or is by committee something that can work? Uh, I think by committee can work. Um, I think it always just depends on who it is, right? I mean. Um, you know, you would like to have a guy that you just said, hey, every time he got the reps and um, he got the experience and the consistency of building towards that. Um, unfortunately, for a variety of reasons, we haven't been able to do that over the course of the, the two years now that, that we've been here. It's kind of has been by committee, and um, that's not by design, but it's a little bit by necessity right now. And uh, hopefully we get to the point where that isn't, isn't the case. Um, and, you know, hopefully that happens sooner rather than later. I had uh, two quick ones. Uh, who determines the when he's going to do the rugby style and when he's just going to, you know, kick it as far as he can? Uh, I guess he's always trying to kick it as far as he can. But but who determines that? Is that his call or yours? And then also on the kick coverage, um, I agree. And I I have to admit I haven't watched a ton of it, like paid a close attention to it. But it seemed like they weren't your your kick coverage unit. Maybe isn't streaking down the field at full speed, and is that by design so you don't go flying past them and give up a big return that way? Um. So first on, on with the Alex, um, each punt and the style of how he punts it, whether he punts with his right foot or left foot, whether he rolls out or doesn't, is all part of the protection call. It's, it, it's really no different than when you call a play offensively. Um, so we'll have a, a, protection, a formation that we'll go out in, a protection call that we'll have, and that's going to dictate his style of punt there. And, and we'll usually base that off of, you know, obviously game plan, but also situation in the game and where we're out in the field and which hash we're on and, and all the things that play into that. Um, in terms of the kickoff coverage, just big picture philosophies uh, from how we do it. If there were 10 guys not counting the kicker covering down, um, We'll usually have ten guys or seven of those ten guys that are going to be our first level of, of defenders, and then there's going to be three guys, you know, one on each side and one more in the middle that kind of pull themselves out as more second level defenders. Uh, I don't think of them as safeties, but there are it is layered in the in the coverage, so you don't get ten guys running down on the same same way. But with that being said, that front seven should not appear slow. Um, going down the field and you know that's one of the areas uh, if you kind of compare and contrast 
personnel from uh, Louisville to, to this past week, we did make some switches. In some cases, it, it showed up really well. In some cases, maybe not. Um, and we're going to continue to evaluate the personnel and make sure that, that we find that right fit of the right, right you know, 10 guys that are going down, and really 20, because you want a good two deep of, of guys running down to cover. And the balancing act is, when you get through the year, is how many plays are they playing offensively or defensively? How many plays are they playing on other special teams units? And are we maximizing the entire roster to the best of our ability? Yeah, uh, going back to the kick return team, I think we all focus on the returner. But of the other 10 guys involved in the play, the guys who are trying to block for him, um, can you talk about that? And, and, and well, I mean, I, I think that is the, the essence of the whole thing, right? I mean, if, if we create seams and, and lanes for the returner, um, we've seen Ja'Kai or Corey Wren or Pokey or Travis J. We've all kind of seen those guys, what they can do if they have the ball in space. Um, it's, it's our job to, to, one, schematically build a system that creates the space, and then, two, go out and be able to execute it and – and get everybody's hat on a hat and, and make the blocks that need to be made. And um, so, yeah, I mean, the, I think you, you make a good point in that it's not really about the returner. Um, and that's why I haven't, I mean, of course, a great returner makes things different. We've all seen, you know, just the phenomenal return, you know, where you break tackles and make guys miss. But when it's all said and done, the way it's, it's drawn up is there should be a seam for him to have the ability to hit. Now, we don't usually account for the kicker, and there's somebody else who is usually unaccounted for in terms of the, the blocking because the way it goes down. Um, and that's on the returner to make those guys miss. But, but it's on everybody else who's blocking is to get it started. Right side, Ira. Uh, Jermaine and Kier, we spoke to them after the game. And uh, you know, as happy as they were to win a game, they sounded pretty frustrated about the defense overall and how you you guys aren't holding teams to a lower scoring. Um, what have you seen from guys that your position, but then also just on the defense since that win and, and, and improving? Well, you know, I think I think Coach uh, probably said it in here today, and and uh, you know, something that we all believe in. But you know, you go through different experiences because it's what you have to go through to grow the way you need to grow. Um, so from a big picture standpoint, um, probably needed to win a game the way we want it because we had been in games otherwise, and, and it didn't turn out the way that, that we wanted to, that came down to the last play. But with all that being said, it really didn't have to be as close as it was. We were in total control defensively uh, through the first quarter and a half, um, and then all of a sudden, big play hits. Uh, we came out in the second half and, and really played well to start the second half. And a big momentum swing was, was the turnover on special teams, I thought. Um, that kind of changed some momentum there in the third quarter. Um, and then all of a sudden, they, they were able to, to score some points. Um, so I think probably without putting words in their mouth, what Kier and Jermaine were probably referencing is just the, the feel of inconsistency. Um, that we can play really well for stretches of, of games. And it's happened in every game that we've been in so far. Um, you know, starting with Notre Dame all the way, all the way uh, through this past week where we can go three, four, five series at a time and look as good as anybody. And then kind of out of nowhere, inexplicably something happens. There's a breakdown, missed tackle, missed assignment, whatever it could be. And, and it looks like you get confidence shaken for a while until momentum swings back in your direction. I think uh, when we make our, you know, the, the real final push defensively this year and get to where we want to get to, it, you won't see that up and down. You won't see us ride that roller coaster of emotion in terms of, of when things are good, they're good, and then when things aren't, it doesn't look good. I think you'll see a more consistent group. Anything else for Coach? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.